Mystery. What is killing channels? Leave pews alone. We killed YouTube. Bottle flip? Cheats? What? Hello internet, welcome to a Game Theory video about Game Theory. If you've been around on the YouTubes for the past few years, there has been one figure that has been popping up left and right. The master of a clap and a half, Matthew Patrick has been all over the place in terms of decoding game lore, pitting game physics against real physics, and tackling the analytical side of what makes YouTube tick. Sounds like quite the challenge. Now, over the years, MatPat has analyzed many of the YouTubers and their channels. So I thought I'd shed some light on the journey of MatPat. What has been accomplished by Team Theorist is no laughing matter, but if anything, it is pretty admirable. However, there has definitely been a lot of interesting changes that have happened over the years, and good old Swanky has been analyzing away. YouTube has always been a passion of mine, and although I'm typically awful at taking my own advice, it has been something that has always been dear to my heart. Alongside that comes the many hours I spent reverse engineering what it has to offer, and I've been doing that for a very, very long time. My channel has always been a dumping ground for my random ideas, but the truth is I come from the world of search optimization and the like, and actually have several family members who specifically optimize things on Google for a living. Yeah, that's a thing people do. So before diving into this whole breakdown, I thought it was important to share the reason why. MatPat was a big inspiration to me when I was starting out, similar to how channels like Extra Credits inspired him. However, being a fellow Ohioan who surprisingly lived near him, it was twice as inspiring to discover his channel while working at my day job. Of course, I didn't know it at the time, but finding out later made it that much more motivating when I took the YouTube plunge myself. Unfortunately, I ignored the call for a long time. Even though my first job back in 2009 was specifically about online video and search rankings with YouTube. But that's enough about me. Let's flip back over to the topic at hand, the game theorists and map pack. Starting off, let's turn back the clock. Uh, maybe not that far back? Definitely wasn't watching that one at work. MatPat's channel growth was slow, but steady since its initial inception. Balancing applying for work, actually landing work, consulting, and trying to research and crank out videos is definitely taxing, but it all ended up paying off in the end. After breaking 50,000 subscribers in late 2012, it was less than a year later he found himself sitting at the 500,000 mark. Actually, it was only 10 months or so. But this was only the beginning because soon after hitting this mark, the channel would explode. And truthfully, it had been on the verge of exponentially exploding for about a year. With the added push of trying to reach a million subscribers, combined with some hard-hitting Nintendo favorites, the game theorists began to rocket towards the heavens. However, there is an important factor about why all this happened. Of course, Matt has always analyzed everything that goes into each and every one of his videos, but there was a major shift that occurred that really sparked a lot of things. You might have even heard Matt Pat talk about it himself. Let's cover a bit of history that led up to this. Into the time machine we go. It's 2009 and a young swanky box is sitting at his desk at a search engine optimization company within the video slash web design department. Our goal was pretty much to convert viewers to paying customers through video and through various landing pages. A landing page is essentially a web page specifically designed to be discovered while searching, and it drives you to what people refer to as a call to action. A call to action is basically the goal of the page, to convince you enough to do whatever task they want you to do, whether that be clicking a button, filling out a form, etc. This was my life, and we consistently focused on short videos that were designed to pop up on search results. During this period, Google pretty much always showed two YouTube videos at the top of all search results. So tailoring our videos to specific search terms was pretty much a guaranteed way to skip to the top of the results. This was during a time period where 720p YouTube video just became a thing, and 1080p would hit later that year. Prior to that, 480p was our good old friend which is pretty much abysmal to today's standards. The buzz around the web was that your videos had to be shorter than two minutes because no one would watch them otherwise. Drop off on video viewership was pretty abundant, so everything was tailored to be short and to the point. Much like the livelihood of those who rely on Google's searching algorithm, any dramatic change in YouTube's algorithm rewrote the entire system of how we operated. And this is what I was getting at before. The number of views and how short videos were began to not really matter. Snagging a view for the sake of a view was no longer a thing after the dramatic changes that occurred around February and March of 2012. But what does all that have to do with MatPat? 
Although marketing trends were to make shorter videos during that time, gaming videos and educational ones were sort of an outlier in that process. Most people wouldn't conform their videos to fit into the accepted marketing space because the call to action was simply to enjoy what they watched and had nothing to do with taking information or pushing towards a sale. So when YouTube flipped the switch to change view count rankings over to watch time, Matt Pat was sitting on a gold mine. He was already developing long form content that got the community talking to one another. And the huge backlog of videos, once discovered, continued to draw people in. And then FNAF happened, and the rest is history. Kidding, of course, it's not that simple. Matt Pat was already sitting on 30 videos of long form quality content when YouTube swapped over its algorithm change. Sure, the video visuals may have not been the best, but the topics covered were engaging. Over the course of a year after that change, his watch time began to build up and funnel people to the channel as they searched for their favorite games. His videos had already amassed 300,000 to 800,000 views each by mid-2013. And at this point in the process, new videos were receiving about 300,000 views two weeks after the upload. The stockpile videos coupled with a few Nintendo hits rocketed the channel to over a million subscribers just three months after the 500,000 milestone. Beyond that, screw attack and game trailers played major roles in continually spreading awareness. 2014 came, and from that point forward, viewership only improved exponentially. He then dove into the world of the film theorists, which I'll touch on a tad later. And then FNAF happened. The end. But at this point, things began to change. Making long form, entertaining gaming content surely brought in the views. But other than being a YouTube hit, his other social profiles suffered in comparison. As content continued to evolve over the years on YouTube, it became less about the content and more about the personality. Turn back the clock to 2009 and 2010, and people were shouting, content is king from the rooftops. But in the YouTuber space, personality shined the brightest. The rise of gaming less players during this time surely influenced the game theorist's decisions on what they would be doing in the future. I mean, I watched Markiplier grow from the small, wee, amnesia reactor he was in the past to the giant he is today. Of course, he was pumping some FNAF steroids during this time, which brought in a lot of viewership past 800,000 subscribers. But his personality and honesty was the driving force for a lot of people. Things like this more than likely did not go unnoticed to MatPat, who was spending tons of time creating high quality content but was being trumped by videos that could be created in a half hour time slot. A well-timed let's play of a trendy game killed it in the watch time category. And in terms of return on investment, yielded similar results in advertisement dollars. Plus, even though Matt was energetic in his videos, there was still a disconnect between the viewer and him as a person. With Markiplier or any other let's player, you felt more emotionally invested in what they were doing. They felt like they were a best friend. When you're just a voice behind an educated animated video, while the video is fun to watch, you aren't as invested in that person. You may tune in because the topic seems interesting, but typically the topic was more important than who presents it. With a Let's Player, personality was first, and they excelled in all mediums. It was very clear as well because people who were on camera in their rawest form excelled on all social platforms outside of YouTube. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you name it, they exploded on it. However, the game theorists, while they didn't do horrible, their numbers were definitely not consistent. It wasn't very long ago that they had 150 to 300,000 Twitter followers. And while that number does sound huge, it was off a bit if you ran analysis against similar sized channels and their associated social followings. Super passionate fans typically seek you out on other platforms, and is usually a decent way to measure impact as a social entity. These factors are more than likely the reason GT Live was born. It offered a way to connect with fans that game theory videos simply could not. You got to meet the real Madden Stephanie without any filters. And it also satisfied the long watch time let's play genre the game theorists had been missing out on. With live streaming released on YouTube, it was the perfect opportunity to branch out. In terms of return on investment, live streaming really pays off. The more invested people become in you, and the more they enjoy you as a person, the more opportunities that will eventually come your way. 
Not only that, but these people who now have a pure taste of your personality will seek you out in videos that they may have not felt connected with before. It keeps you in their thoughts. Plus, people love to see a happy couple. For those who are in relationships, it gives them hope, and they can sort of live vicariously through GT Live. Besides this, film theory was sort of born out of a necessity as well. It surely goes hand in hand with video games, but it truly has a much bigger audience. The reason I say that is think of how many people play video games, who also watch Netflix, who also go to the movies and watch TV shows. Yeah, that's a great deal of us. Now, think of all the people who do those same things, but who aren't playing the newest games, or games at all. While the audience of Five Nights at Freddy's, Undertale, Hello Neighbor, and Bendy and the Ink Machine is pretty large and pulls in tons of views for the game theorists, it's still a drop in the bucket in terms of the interests of every human out there. But those people still come to YouTube and search for the things they're interested in. It's the second most popular search engine after all, whether it be that new movie trailer or the announcement of new episodes for their favorite show. The film theorists are waiting to catch their searches with open arms. This is why the channel has grown so fast. Sure, it had the extra boost of MatPat already having an audience, but the people converting to subscribers now are because he's connecting with an audience he may have been missing before. And he's absolutely crushing it, as the videos typically pop up on trending all the time. YouTube wants to compete with TV now more than ever, so videos like this are being put in the spotlight. It's why gaming isn't as highlighted as it was before, and why it was shoved off onto that weird gaming.youtube subsite that not too many people use. It used to dominate the platform, but it made people think YouTube was pretty much just gaming. The everyday person who may not play games found it odd. Now, don't take this as the game theorist fizzling out. It still outperforms the film theorists, but I believe in the long run, the film theorists may overshadow it. It just reaches a much bigger audience across the board that all ages can enjoy. However, those who have been with the game theorists for a long time also know that it has changed dramatically. For better or for worse, it evolved in order to stay relevant. This is why you no longer see videos on niche topics or games from the past. Creating videos like this would forfeit the searchability for the videos. So most of the videos are tied to hot topics, like all the exploding indie titles, the newest games, and of course, fidget spinners. Funny side note about that. While writing this script, I was on a walk right before that video came out. And I was thinking to myself, why hasn't MatPat made a fidget spinner video yet? When I got home, I refreshed my email, and there it was, like a gift from the fidgety gods. One of the most notable things for me was how current videos are tagged. Nowadays, videos typically buckshot game names in hopes of casting a huge net. Google search and YouTube search are entirely two different beasts. And if you got the watch time to pass around, it certainly can fuel your video for some incredible reach. It makes sense to do this now, since if your video is going to receive tons of watch time, it is going to saturate those tags heavily. So when you're watching that Let's Play on a Mario game, and the newest Mario theory pops up in your next up queue, that's because YouTube is thinking this video is associated with that particular game topic since it has millions of minutes of watch time backing it up. Alongside this, there are channel names that have popped up in the tags too. Accruing a ton of watch time and including the tag Vadividja will probably make your video pop up when people are searching for his lore based series. On the flip side, Super Mario Logan will pull some Mario plushie fans over your way, as a Mario Kart 8 theory may pop up as a recommended video. Strategy as a creator is one of the most important things, and that's what MatPat has always been good at. Using analytics to shape the way your content evolves, and to continually raise awareness with each and every video that goes live. If there's one thing we can all learn from watching the game theorists grow, it's certainly that you must always be adaptable in what you do. Although, I totally have no idea if these channel name tags fall in the realm of misleading metadata, so certainly be careful. Keep in mind what your audience wants and how you can continually improve on that. Each and every time you release something, it's another step on your journey. Phase out things that seem to conflict with your audience unless they are a staple of what you want to do. I think that's what's so neat about the Game Theory's journey as creators. For those who want to start creating today, Understanding the entire journey of people we look up to is certainly important. Don't let the end game of the results eclipse the entire adventure it took them to get there. Remember, the content creators of tomorrow start at ground zero. So I hope this look back at the journey of the game theorists was both motivating and insightful.
But hey, my voice is too deep for this, and that's just a theory. A game theory. And how the game theories came to be. Thanks for tuning in to this clap and a half spectacle. If you'd like to join me on my YouTube voyage and continue to uncover the mysteries behind your favorite games, then the subscribe button is just what you're looking for. Thanks for watching guys and gals, and until my next video, cheers. If you like this video, perhaps you'll enjoy some of these. There's a slew of other theories on this channel too. So regardless, I hope you enjoy.